Welcome to Norton Chemistry. Today we're going to be doing basic concepts in organic chemistry. So this topic leads on quite nicely from GCSE chemistry and we have some key definitions to start off and we need to memorize these definitions. So aliphatic compounds contain straight or branched chains of carbon atoms. Allocyclic compounds contain carbon atoms which form a non-aromatic ring. Aromatic compounds contain carbon atoms which form a ring with a delocalized electron pi system. Saturated compounds contain only single carbon bonds, they don't contain any double or triple bonds, whereas unsaturated compounds such as alkenes and alkynes, which have triple carbon bonds, contain double or triple carbon bonds. So when we're naming organic compounds, we need to account for the number of carbon atoms in the alkyl group, which is just the carbon chain. So if we have one atom in the carbon chain, the prefix is methyl, if we have two is ethyl, three is propyl, four is butyl, 5 is pentyl and 6 is hexyl and so on, so for example heptyl, octyl. And the definition of a homologous series is a group of compounds with the same functional group, which is the reactive part of a compound that's responsible for its chemical properties, and each successive member differs by CH2. So for example, alkanes is a homologous series where the general formula is CnH2n plus 2. And each member has the same general formula with the same functional group, which is just the alkyl group. And so in the homologous series of methane, CH4, ethane, C2H6, that differs by CH2. So you can see that from CH4 to C2H6, we have CH2 being added. So nomenclature is a key part of organic chemistry, and the stem is derived from the longest carbon chain. So for example, if you have four carbon atoms in the longest chain in the molecule, then the stem is butane. The suffix is derived from the most significant functional group. So for example, for alkenes, it's dash E and E or ene. The suffix is derived from the most significant functional group. So for example, it's ene for alkenes. A prefix may or may not need, be needed depending on the number and types of functional groups. So it's also determined by the functional groups present in the compound. Numbers indicate the position of functional groups on the carbon chain. So for example, in this carbon chain, we have four carbon atoms. And if we have an alcohol group, OH, that's this second position, we number the functional group two when we name the compound. And we need to remember that when we have multiple functional groups, we have to put them in alphabetical order. So for example, if you have a chloro group and a bromo group, you would put the bromo group first and then the chloro group because B comes for C in the alphabet. So for each of these different types of compounds with different functional groups, we have different naming rules and different prefixes and suffixes. So technically, alkanes don't have a functional group because they're unreactive and we recognize them by the fact that they're hydrocarbons, they only contain carbon and hydrogen atoms, and they contain only carbon-carbon single bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds. And for alkanes, the suffix is ane, and there is no prefix. Alkenes we recognize by the carbon-carbon double bond functional group. This makes alkenes highly reactive because in a carbon-carbon double bond, you have a sigma bond and a pi bond, and the pi bond is more exposed and has a lower bond enthalpy than the sigma bond. So the pi bond can break first and cause the carbon-carbon double bond to break. So they can react by addition reactions. The suffix for alkenes is ene. Alcohols have the OH functional group. And if there's no other functional groups present, then we use the suffix ol. But if we have other functional groups, such as an alkene carbon-carbon double bond, then we use the prefix hydroxy. Carboxylic acids have the carboxyl functional group, which is a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen and OH group attached. And for these, we have the suffix enoic acid. Haloalkanes, so it depends on the halogen, but haloalkanes have the functional group of a carbon attached to a halogen atom, which we represent by X when we don't know which one it is. And for these, we use the prefix. So for example, fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo. Now aldehydes are likely to be a functional group, which you haven't seen before. And they have a carbon which has a double bond to an oxygen and is also has a bond to a hydrogen atom. And the aldehyde group is always at the end of the chain. And the suffix for aldehydes is, so for example, if we have this compound, then because we have three carbon atoms, it's propanol. Ketones have a carbon atom, which have a carbon oxygen bond, but it's in the middle of the chain rather than at the end as in aldehydes. And for ketones, we use the suffix own. So for example, this compound is propanone. So have a go at naming these compounds and then I'll show you the answers. So for the first compound, it has two carbon-carbon double bonds, 
one at the first position here and one at the one, two, three, third position. And the longest carbon chain is four carbon atoms. So that means that the sem is but, and then we use dashes to separate numbers and letters. So we have the carbon carbon double ones at one and three with a comma between, because obviously it would just say 13 otherwise, and diene as a suffix because we have two of the functional groups. And then for this one on the right, we need to identify the longest carbon chain so that's going to be four carbon atoms, because if we count, you can see that we have one, two, three, four. And this here is a methyl group, so it's a branch. So we don't count that as part of the chain. You wouldn't number the other direction, because if you numbered that way, then that would lead to higher numbers, because you would have a one for the chloro, but you would have a three for both the alcohol and the methyl group. We're going to have two prefixes here, because we have a chlorine group and a methyl group, and we're going to have the suffix as the alcohol group. So remember that you need to put the functional groups in alphabetical order. So it's chloro first, so it's going to be 4-chloro, 2-methyl, because M comes after C, and it's going to be butan, because we have four atoms in the longest chain, 2-ol, because the alcohol group is at position 2. And then we need to learn the different types of formulae. So we have general formula, which is the simplest algebraic formula of a homologous series. So for example, with alkanes, CnH2n plus 2, the alkenes, CnH2n. Structural formula shows the arrangement of atoms without drawing any bonds. So for example, propane is CH3, CH2, CH3, and propan2ol is CH3, CH, OH, CH3. Molecular formula shows the number of each element's atoms in a compound. So for example, propane is C3H8. So skeletal formula is something you're probably not familiar with already. And the lines represent bonds between atoms. Vertices are the carbon atoms, and the functional groups are drawn onto the skeletal formula. So for example, in propane, we have three vertices, and each vertice represents a carbon atom, so we have three carbon atoms, and each line represents a bond, so we have two carbon-carbon bonds, and because we have no additional functional groups, that means that we don't need to draw anything else. Whereas for propan 2 ol we have the same skeletal formula, but we have an OH group at position 2, so we have to draw that on. Displayed formulae show the positioning of atoms and bonds, so for example, propane looks like that. You need to make sure that your connectivity is good between the atoms. So for example, between a carbon and hydrogen, you wouldn't draw it like this because that's just incorrect. But it's a mistake that students often make. And then empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. So for example, butane, the empirical formula is C2H5 because the molecular formula is C4H10. The simplest ratio is two to five. Isomerism, so structural isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. And this is one type of isomerism. There's another type called stereoisomerism, which you'll come across later. So for example, so for example, two isomers of C3HAO are propan 2 ol and propan 1 ol So the alcohol groups are at different positions. So that means that they have the same molecular formula, C3HAO. But as you can see, propan 2 ol has a different structural formula from propan 1 ol And then also for C3H7O, two of its isomers are propanol and propanone. So they both have the same molecular formula, but a different structural formula because the functional groups are different. So that's the main two types of structural isomerism, where you have different positioning of functional groups and different functional groups present. Reaction mechanisms, how we represent how a reaction takes place. And as we know, reactions involve electrons. And curly arrows show the movement of an electron pair. And a curly arrow with a single arrow headline shows the movement of a single electron. It will become apparent why this is important later in the course. Bond fission can be homolytic or heterolytic. So bond fission is essentially the breaking of bonds. And in homolytic fission, the bond breaks and each electron in the bond goes to a different atom, forming free radicals. And free radicals have an unpaired electron, which is unstable and highly reactive, which is represented by a large dot. So for example, if you have a halogen that's a radical, it'd be X with a dot, because that's the unpaired electron. So a useful way of remembering how this works is that homo represents the same. So when homolytic fission occurs, the same two things are formed, two radicals. Whereas heterolytic fission is when a bond breaks and both electrons go to the same atom forming oppositely charged ions, so different things. You can remember that hetero means that we're forming different charges. And so in homolytic fission, as you can see in this diagram, as the bond breaks, one electron goes to the X atom and one electron goes to the Y atom, and that forms an X radical and a Y radical. And heterolytic fission, as you can see from the diagram, both electrons in the bond go to the Y atom. So you form a negative Y ion and a positive X ion. 
So we've gone into that question. Allyl bromide, CH2, with a double bond, CH, CH2Br, is used in the production of polymers. Allyl bromide is a member of a homologous series. Compounds in this series have the same general formula. What is meant by the term homologous series? A homologous series is a series of compounds which have the same functional group, and each successive member of the series differs by CH2. What is the general formula of the homologous series that has allyl bromide as a member? So if we have a look at allyl bromide, we can see that it has three carbon atoms, five hydrogen atoms, and one bromine atom. So the molecular formula is C3H5Br. And if you were to eliminate a CH2, you would have CH2CHBr, which is C2H3Br, which is C2H3Br. So as you can see, there's always one bromine atom. So that will always be a part of the general formula. And then to find the number of hydrogen atoms, you have to multiply the number of carbon atoms by two and subtract one. So for example, if you have three carbon atoms, three times two is six, minus one is five. If you have two carbon atoms, two times two is four, minus one is three. So the general formula is Cn, H, 2n, minus one, Br. Give the systematic name for allyl bromide. So it can help to draw out the displayed formula of the compound. So as you can see, in the carbon chain, there is three atoms. And in order to get the lowest numbering, we have to number from the carbon atom which is attached to the bromine. So that's one, two, three. And then we'll have the bromo prefix and ene will be the suffix. So it's one bromo prop two ene. Reaction mechanisms use curly arrows and can involve electrophiles and nucleophiles. What does a curly arrow represent in mechanisms? So we know that a curly arrow represents the movement of an electron pair. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my entire Module 3 revision in under one hour. You can also check out my website to purchase my notes and flashcards. The link will be in the description below.